Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is Shuffle Integers and it is a medium level of problem. So the problem essentially says that we have been given an array of n elements and uh, there is a particular sequence to it. So basically the whole array of n elements consists of two different types of elements and uh, each of them is of size n by 2 and those elements are a1, a2, a3, a4 and then the second type of elements will be there b1, b2, b3 and b4 like this. So if there are x elements those will correspond to n by 2 elements. So n by 2 elements will be like this and n by 2 elements will be like this and the total will be n. Right. We have to shuffle them in such a way as that we get a1 and b1 together and then a2 and b2 together and then a3 and b3 together and then a4 and b4 together. Now they have asked us to do it in like in place right without using any extra space. So this is our whole problem and uh, essentially you would always know how you can shuffle these elements. So you can take this element at uh, let us say you are at this position 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 right. Now all the elements from the starting positions from 0 to n by 2 will go to 2th position. That means this element at 0 will remain at 0. The element at 1 will go to index 2. The element at 2 will go to index 4. The element at 3 will go to index 6. Right. So this is how they will appear in the final array. And similarly all the elements from the second half will go just adjacent to them. So 2i plus 1 and then for example this is a1. Right. For a1 corresponding you have b1. So you have 0 and n by 2 indexes. In the final array this 0 will be at 2 into i and this will be at 2 into i plus 1. Right. So this is how you can have a simple for loop to have both of the elements. Let me just write it also so that it is more clear to you. So I am just going to take this part and uh, let us say I am going to have a simple for loop. So I have for int a is equal to 0, i is less than n by 2 and i plus plus. Right. Now let us say I have my final array, answer array. Answer of 2 into i should be equals to a of i and answer of 2 into i plus 1 should be equals to a of i plus n by 2 n n by 2 right so this is how you can easily have this this is the code that you want but the problem is here we are using a different answer array and we are using some extra space this is not something we want till here we were all clear that we can solve the problem in this manner but we don't want to use this extra space so how can we solve this problem now there are multiple methods of solving similar problems here if you have a look at the constraints you will realize that array of i a of i is only up to 10 raised power 3 right. So why 10 raised power 3 and how is it useful to us? If it is a very small number there are multiple ways to save different numbers using the same integer value. Let us see how. The first way is to use bit manipulation. So you will realize that 10 raised power 3 is a very small number. So 2 raised power 10 is roughly 1024 and this is roughly uh, 10 is part 3. That means only 10 bits will be utilized for storing this particular number. But in a normal integer, how many bits are there? There are 32 bits, right? So if only 10 bits are being used to represent our number, we can reuse the remaining bits to represent some other number. So let us say that means, for example, we have 10 bits in total. So this, these are 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, right? So let us say these are 10 bits in total and we are using only 4 of them to represent some particular number. Right. So we can use 4 bits from here to represent another number. Right. So this is how you can store a say 2 different numbers using the same integer variable. Right. This is a very common technique and I have discussed this particular technique multiple times in previous videos. But today we are going to have a look at a little different technique. It, is, it also utilizes the same concept of storing different numbers using using the same variable and uh, but this is not going to be bit manipulation it is going to be a little different method right so how do we actually do it now let us say I have a number and uh, let us say I have a value called mod I am taking it to be 1000 here for simpler understanding but uh, in the final solution we have to take it this value other than 1000 right so let us see what happens I have a number y right and let us say it takes 3 spaces. So y1, y2 and y3. These are 3 digits of y. 
Now let's say I have a number x. I want to store it using the same variable y is stored. Right. So how can I do it? I can multiply this particular number with 1000. So if I multiply x by 1000 and add it to this particular number y, the number will look like x, then y1, y2, y3. Why this is why is it like this? Because when I multiply x by 1000, it is going to be x000. And when I add it to this particular number, the old number, this will be x, y1, y2, y3. So you see, for any three digit number, I could have taken a mod value equals to 1000 and I could have easily stored all of the numbers. Now, why only 1000, why only three digit numbers? Let me explain you this part. So three digit numbers are up to 999, right? So whatever you have as the maximum value, you will have to add one to it and take that particular number as mod so that you can consider all of the values, right? So now what we did here was we were able to store a different number x with these numbers and without disturbing the original order. So now the question is how do we retrieve these numbers, right? To retrieve this number y1, y2, y3, you can take modulo y1, y2, let's say this is the number, you can take this modulus operator with the value that you have taken mod, right? This is going to give you the remainder when you divide by 1000. So that is essentially this particular value. And if you want to get this particular value x, you can take this whole number. So here is also x. You can take this whole number x, y2, y1, y2, y3 divided by 1000. Right. So this is how you can retrieve both of the values. Now, this is the idea is again similar storing two different values using a single integer variable. The earlier method we discussed was using bit manipulation. This is also very popular. I have explained it multiple times. That is why I wanted to explore this new method of saving multiple values using the same variable. And in this particular case, we will be multiplying and dividing certain numbers. And how do we decide the uh, mod value? We can take the maximum value that we can have and add one to it so that we don't miss out on any other value, right? This is exactly what I have done here. I actually had one wrong submission in this particular problem. Because instead of taking 1001, I took 1000 and that would be completely wrong because array of i can also be equal to 10 to the power 3 that is 1000, right? So I have to take some value greater than it. So I have taken 1001, right? So this part is essentially the same which I discussed here. You see this is the part that I have written in the first for loop. This part was very simple to understand but uh, we wanted to do it, do it in, in place. So that is why we have modified this a little bit. So what I'm essentially doing is at i into 2, I want to store what was the original number at i, right? And add it to my current number, right? So a of i mod this particular value will help me to retrieve the original value that was present there. And if I multiply it by 1000, I will be able to store a new value at i into 2, right? So you see, I'm adding this particular new value there. Similarly, at i into 2 plus 1, first of all, I have to retrieve the original value what was essentially there because you see what happens let's say i have this value uh 2231 right now i have a new value uh let's say 20 right so i want to store these two together so what i'll do i'll multiply this number by 1000 so it is it will be equal to 20000 right now i add these two values so it will be equal to 20 then 231 so you see i am able to store two values but now when for any other integer, I want this particular value 231, I cannot take this whole value, right? I have to retrieve the original value first by modding it with 1000, right? Or in this particular case, we have taken it to be 1001. It depends on what is your maximum value, right? That is why you will have to first take the mod and then multiply it with the 1001 value, right? And at the end, you can just divide all of the values by this 1001 so that you can get all the new values only and you can re remove the old values. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works. So again, you are also free to do bit manipulation. It is also a very interesting method. And uh, I've made several videos of it, although I don't remember right now which videos for them, but uh, I've discussed that particular method multiple times. So that is why I've discussed a new method this, this time. And uh, you see this pass all the risk cases. And the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it, that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye.